Welcome back to Zero to Game Dev Hero. So far we've only learned about different parts of C Sharp and Unity, but we haven't programmed a real game yet. Today we're going to change that, because today we're going to start creating a Flappy Bird clone. Flappy Bird is a mobile game that became very famous for a short time in 2013. It is great for beginners, because it's not difficult to program. Still, we will learn many important aspects of game programming. First of all, we need a few graphic assets for the game. I have prepared the assets for you, so that you can immediately start with creating the game. You can find the assets in the description. Let's have a look at the game. There is a website where you can play the game for free. I have put the link in the description as well. If you don't know the game, you can play it for a bit to get a better understanding of the game. The basic principle is that you have to fly with the bird between the pipes. The game is controlled with only one button, here with the space key. And whenever you press the space key, the bird flies up a bit and then falls down again. Let's play it for a bit. So you always need to press the space key and yeah, you need to go through the pipes. It's not that easy. And you have the score, so you always know how many pipes you passed. Oh, that's really difficult. Let's try another time. Yeah, well, it's uh, really difficult, so um, I can't get past the score of four. So yeah, but um, okay. So uh, now let's start to rebuild the game. For this, we need to add the assets that I have linked in the description to our project. Here in your project folder, um, you can create a new folder and call it sprites. To do that, you can go to create, with right click create and then folder and call it sprites. Here we can store all our sprites for the project. You can place here the content of the zip, so just drag and drop the content in here. The first thing we should do is the bird. So the bird is an object that is falling down. It behaves like a real object that is influenced by gravity. Only when you press a button, a force from the bottom is added so that the bird flies up. Let's create a new scene and call it Flappy Bird. For this we can go to our asset folder and scenes and here uh, create a new scene. What create? and scene. And we can double click it and then it opens. And now you can see you have a new fresh scene here, only with the main camera and the light. Even though we are in a 3D project, we can still create a 2D game in here. So let's create an empty game object and call it bird. like this. Now we can add the sprite that we added to our project to this bird game object. So we have a few sprites here. The one we need now is this bird sprite. We can click on it one time and then you can see that uh, in the inspector uh, this opens. To use this object in the game we need to change the texture type because here we can say if this image is a texture for a 3D object or um, a light map, shadow mass and so on. There are a lot of uh, things you don't need to know about at the moment. But um, what we need now is a sprite. So a sprite is a 2D object and can be used as a 2D object or UI object. So um, change that to sprite. And now you have to set the sprite mode to single. So this tells Unity that in this image you have only one sprite and that this is the only sprite you have. You don't need to care about the other settings for now, but you need to apply the changes, otherwise they won't be visible to you, so click apply. And now we can change also all of our images to sprite texture mode, so uh, let's, yeah. 
select them all, then here go to Sprite and Sprite Mode Single and apply. So now we have all objects as sprites and we can yeah, use them now or later. Now we can add the bird sprite to our game object. So drag and drop it on the bird. And yeah, now you can see it in your game. Cool. Now let's set up our scene a little bit so that it looks more like the game. So the first thing we can do is to go to game and here you can see uh, how yeah the game would look like. We can change here at the top the free aspect to um, something else. So um, yeah, let's go with the 16 by 9 or full HD. Um, so now we have a full HD viewport and um, the camera is okay but we can yeah move it down a little bit so we go to camera here and then here in the transform we can move the camera and we want the bird to be in the middle in the center so um yeah we can center out it by uh, giving it yeah the zero value and the y zero at the x and minus 10 in the z axis because the camera needs to be um if a little bit further away from the bird so that it's not exactly at the bird's position because when we yeah change it to zero it's it's exactly at the bird's position you know what i mean so minus 10 was pretty good we want to change the background as well so here in the camera settings you can see here skybox and you can change skybox to solid color so that the background is not a skybox like you before like this is a skybox but it's a solid color and here you can choose the color you want so yeah something like this works well and what we can also do is to change the projection to auto graphic well what this will do i will show it to you in the scene view so let's go to the side view so we see the bird from the side Here's from the front and from the side. You can't see it, but you will get the idea. So here you can see the viewport of the camera. Here, when we change it to orthographic, it goes straight from, yeah, from the right to the left. Now, if we change it back to perspective, you can see that it goes in a cone. So this is like a real camera. But for 2D games, we don't want to have any perspective. So we can change it to orthographic so that every object independent on, of the Z position. So it's not that important if it's somewhere here or somewhere here. It always will be uh, shown in the same size. And that's something good for 2D games because, yeah, sprites don't have any perspectives. So um, we can change it to orthographic. So here we can go back to the game and now you can see if we um, go closer with the camera, it does not change the size of the bird. And that's good because we can have different layers, but the layers are the size that we designed them in. So that's something cool. Now in um, the sprites pack that I have uploaded, there is a floor. You can just drag and drop it into the scene. And we can move the floor object a little bit to the bottom. So let's move it somewhere here. And the scene looks good for now. But when we start the game, nothing happens. We want the bird to fall down when no key is pressed. It should behave like an object in the real world. And there is a component for this and it's the rigid body component. We can click on stop again. And now we can add the rigid body component to the bird. And now you have two bird objects. This one is just our graphic. We can therefore call it bird sprite. And this will only hold our sprite, but our 
bird will be this component. So here we can add the rigid body component. And there are two rigid body components, rigid body and rigid body 2D. Because we are building a 2D game, we can choose the rigid body 2D. If you add a rigid body to an object, this object will be influenced by physics. The object will now have a weight or a mass and will be pulled down by gravity and many more things. This object now behaves like a real world object. So now we can try to hit start again. And you can see the bird is falling down because it's influenced by gravity. Now we want that the bird flies up when we hit a key. Therefore, we need to write a script. So let's create a new script on our bird game object. So we click on bird and here add a component. And the script should be called bird controller. And because there is no bird controller component, we can make a new one. So new script and create and add. Now we can double click it to open it. We already know how to check if a key was pressed. So if you want, you can pause the video and implement the statement that checks every frame if the space key was pressed. Okay, so let's do it together now. Now we can write in the update if input get key down and in this case we want down because we want to trigger it only in the moment that the key is pressed and here we need a key code and the key code we want is the one for space and don't forget the curly brackets and here we go now every time the key is pressed we want to add a little push from the bottom so that the bird goes up. The rigid body component offers us some cool methods for this kind of stuff. But first we need to access the rigid body somehow. When we wanted to access the transform, we just wrote transform. But in this case, this is not possible. For the transform, we had a shortcut because every object has a transform. But here we don't have that comfort. We need to create a reference to the rigid body component by ourselves. So what we can do is we can write in the top rigid body 2D and give it a name, call it RB, short for rigid body. So rigid body 2D is the type and RB is the name, but it has no value. So there is no rigid body 2D assigned to the RB. If we use the RB, it will not know which rigid body it should use. So to give it a value or to give it the right component, we can use the getComponent method that is offered by Unity. So in the start method, I already said to you that in the start method, um, you can set up uh, all kinds of stuff and this is one of those things you can set up in the start method because it's called only once in the beginning. You can write rb equals get component then the angle brackets and inside of uh, those you can write rigid body 2d. Normal brackets and semicolon. So what does this line do? The get component will look for a component in your object and the component it looks for is the rigid body 2D. So this statement will look in the object the script is attached to for the rigid body 2D component and it will find this one and then it will assign this component to the RB. So RB is now a reference to this rigid body 2D component. And now we can change 
values for the RB and it will change the values here for the rigid body 2D component. Cool. So now we have our reference and we can use it in our script now. So let's go back to our input check and we can access it here with the RB. What we want now is to add some force from the bottom. So inside the rigid body class, there is this method called add force. This method will add a force to the rigid body. Perfect. Now we just need to give the method a direction in which the force should be added. So inside the brackets, we can write a direction. And as a shortcut, we can write vector to up. Here we need a vector 2 because it's a rigid body 2D, so we don't have a vector 3, but a vector 2. And vector 2 dot up is the shortcut for yeah, a vector with the x value 0 and the y value 1. So there are um, other shortcuts to uh, down. So this is exactly the same, but instead of one, you have minus one. Uh, you can see it here and uh, for ref uh, left and right as well. So yeah, we need up. So it's that easy to add some force to our objects. Let's try it out. Well, nothing happens when we press the space key. Because there is a little bug. The gravity adds force from the top and we add force from the bottom. The bird is not really flying up because of that. To fix this, we need to stop the bird's movement before we add force. So let's go back to our code. To stop the bird from falling down before we add the force, we can use the velocity value. The velocity vector of the rigid body, it represents the rate of change of the rigid body position. So an object that is not moving will have a velocity vector of zero. And if it's moving, it will have the direction as the velocity vector. We can access the velocity by writing RB, so our rigid body, and then velocity. And we can assign it the value zero. But because it's a vector two, we have to assign a vector two to it. So we can here as well write vector two and then zero. This is the shortcut for the value x zero and y zero. So we can save that, press play. And now we can see that the bird is not flying down very fast, but it's not flying up. Let's try it out again. So every time I press space, it, yeah, it tries to go up, but um, then the gravity is a little bit stronger. What we should do now is to add more force. So here we need to multiply the vector so here we need to multiply the direction with the value so that the, the force that we add is stronger. We can make a variable here at the top for this. Let's call it, uh, it's a float and let's call it force. And we want to assign this value in the inspector. So let's just write ser serialize field. So now we can assign this value in the inspector. And here we can multiply the direction by the force. Let's save. Let's try out a force of, yeah, 100, for example. And here we can now see that the bird somehow flying up but it's still not enough for us because it's kind of heavy so let's stop the game and give it a force of maybe 300 
Yeah, and you need to play around with this value. Ah, perfect. So now you can see. It works. Now you have your bird controller ready. So the bird behaves like a flappy bird. You can now tweak those values if you want to. So you can uh, give it more force or less force. Um, you can change the mass if you want. But for now, that's good how we uh, set it up so we can tweak it later. And that was a lot for today. Now you know how to move your bird. And next time we will add the pipes to the game and move the pipes from the right to the left side, like in the real game. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel because it supports me a lot. If you have any feedback or questions, leave a comment. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you.